Today, I'm going to jump head first into a fantastic feature of Creality Print 5.1 that can elevate your 3D printing game, Adaptive Layers. It's one of those features that was drastically improved from the previous version. Adaptive Layers, also known as Variable Layer Height or Dynamic Layer Height, is a technique used in 3D printing to optimize print quality and reduce print time. Instead of using a fixed layer height throughout the entire print, adaptive layer height varies the thickness of each layer based on the complexity of the model. In this video, we'll see how we can make adaptive layers work for us. This video is sponsored by our friends at PCBWay. Have you considered using your own custom design box for your electronics project? PCBWay.com can help with that. Simply log on to their 3D printing portal, upload your custom design, select your design units, any one of their many material types and colors, and any other critical design requirements, and click Submit Request. It's that easy. Let PCBWay.com help you take your project from prototype to production. When you enable adaptive layer heights, Creality Print analyzes your 3D model to determine areas with high detail and areas with less detail. Creality Print will then dynamically adjust the layer height based on the geometry of your model. This means it'll use small layer heights in areas that have more detail and taller layer heights where it can save time. This is especially useful for models with varying levels of detail. Think of a miniature with intricate detail on the face and less detail areas on the back. The adaptive layer features ensures that you get the best of both worlds. Now, I'm currently working on a bunch of these piggy pork banks that I got from STL Flex. And I've been noticing a lot of steps or rings at the top of the eyeballs. Since the bulging eyes are a key focal point of this design, I want to make them as clean as possible. And I think they are a great candidate for the use of adaptive layers. So let's open up Creality Print 5.1 load a print and see what we can do to reduce the stepping and improve the overall quality of our finished prints. Maybe we'll reduce the print time in this process. I'm Bill and this is Pushing Plastic. Okay, so I'm in Creality Print 5.1. I have my eyeball loaded up on my bed plate and now I gotta make sure our settings are correct. I will be using my Ender 3 V3SE on this one. I want to change that. I have a textured bed plate on there. I'll make that change. And I will be working with my free mover PLA, so I'm good there. And I just want to go ahead and center this because sometimes I'm a little anal retentive. Uh, in the end, I'll be printing an entire uh, print bed full of these. Probably get about somewhere between nine, maybe 12 on there. But I want to start with just one and work out my adaptive layers. But I'm going to accept the default results for this, just so we have something to compare with. Let's go ahead and slice this up. And we're going to see what we're going to get. Pretty much what we expected. 42 minutes, almost 43 on this. Uh, the one thing we are going to do is we're going to change our structure type and we're going to look at layer height. I'm going to click layer height right here and you'll notice everything is yellow. No change, but over here we have a nice little chart showing us what the different colors mean. Yellow means our, we're going to come out about 0.19 and as you can see over here on the right, my layer height is set at 0.2. So that's exactly what I'd expect to see. Now, when we come back and we change our settings, then we'll notice the difference. But let's go ahead, print this out, and we'll get a baseline to judge against. What we're going to try to do is reduce these rings at the top. Looking at this print, I can see a lot of room for improvement. It may be hard to see as well in the color white so I printed a second one in pink hopefully this will show the steps and the rings a bit better you'll notice the rings and steps up here at the top of the dome 
I can do better. Let's jump back into Creality Print, apply some adaptive layers, and see what we can do. All right, so let's see what we can do to improve the appearance of our model and get rid of some of these steps and rings at the top. Real quick look before we slide out of the preview mode here. I'm going back and I'm going to look at layer height. Remember, everything is all yellow, which means 0.19, or in our case, 0.2 layer height. Well, let's just put it back to structure type. We're going to prepare. Make sure your model is clicked. It's not clicked. If you're not clicked on it, you can't do anything with it. So click your model. And we're going to come up here to the top toolbar and all the way to the right, the very last button, it looks like a bunch of horizontal lines stacked on top of each other. Big fat one on the bottom, tiny little one at the top. Go ahead and click that and you'll see our settings and our model itself becomes grayed out. So we got three settings up here. Uh, we got the adaptive, the smooth, and the keep minimum. Let's run through those pretty quick here. Well, as quick as we can and accomplish something. So if I hit adaptive, you can see how it's making a change to the model. Each one of these colors represents a different layer height. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not seeing any chart here to tell me what they are, but I do know that if we go to preview, get a better looking model if we set to layer height. Now, this totally looks different than what we saw before where we we're all yellow. I'm gonna zoom in here. You can see we have a yellow band at the bottom, which is our 0.19 to 0.20 range. Then we're coming into this orange, and it looks to be a little bit darker than 0.35 millimeter over here on the chart, but not quite 0.39. Then we're back into regular orange, which corresponds to 0.27. We got a little band here of yellow. Kind of strange, but there's probably a little glitch in the model somewhere. I'll have to investigate that. Um, going up, we're coming into a green and yellow mix. What we're looking at like 0.16 layer height there. Keep in mind for all this that we started with a 0.2 layer height. And the only thing we did was press the button that says adaptive. So you can see where, where it's bigger, we're getting taller layer heights. As we get more detailed areas towards the top, it gets smaller until we get all the way up here to the top let me scroll down and it looks like we're hitting about between 0.8 and 0.4 for a layer height that's pretty cool um to me it looks more like 0.8 but i got old man eyes so maybe i'm missing something in the color uh we'll find out a little bit more later on let's go back to prepare and what i'm going to do now is I'm going to click on the adaptive. Everything stays the way it was. This time I'm going to click the smooth button. And you got to click these buttons to make your changes apply. So we'll click smooth. And you can see where it changed. But again, there's nothing over here telling you what it is. So I go back to preview. And you'll notice our model looks a little bit different here. That little band of yellow we had in here from what I think is a defective model is no longer there. We got a darker shape. Well, we still have a orange band to start with we're going to a darker orange then lighter orange a little bit it gets darker again i'm not gotta be something in the model causing that i would expect it to get lighter all the way up then we're coming back into the yellow for like 0.19 well 0.16 we're jumping back a little bit probably close to a 0.15 maybe a 0.13 one eh, probably a 17 I'm sorry. Um, going back up into the green, we're getting down to a 0.12 layer height. But I'm not seeing the blue like I did before. Which means I'm only hitting a layer height of 0.12. I'd like to make that as small as I can up there. So I'm going to come back. Oh, well, before we get out of here, let's notice one thing. When we ran the regular model, our print time was about, I think it was 42 minutes, 52 seconds. So by hitting the adaptive layer, we're going to get a better looking model and we reduce the print time uh, down to 37 minutes. So 42 to 37, we saved about five minutes in print time. Now this is only a small model. So five minutes, that's pretty cool. I like that. Let's go back to prepare. When I'm 
using adaptive layers. I'm using them because I want a better looking model. I'm not so much interested in saving time. The printer is going to take as much time as it needs. If it's going to do that, I want a good looking model. So I tend to move my adaptive uh, quality slash speed towards the quality. So if I go towards the quality, it means I'm going to get smaller layers, which means more detail and a better looking model. If I go towards speed, it's going to give us a faster print, but not as good looking. So let, let's put this to the test. Let's let's keep it where it's at, at 0.88, and let's take a quick look at the preview. And you can see where, whoops, always remember to hit that adaptive button and the smooth if you need to. Remember to hit those. Let's go ahead and see what we got. And you can see right now we have a lot more dark orange. Uh, so we're closer to the 0.39, which means a lot taller layers. We're coming up a little band of orange here for 0.27. Um, we get back up here, we're a little bit of the 0.19, then to the 0 0.12, 0 0.08. That's going to give us a pretty nasty looking model, but we did knock five more minutes off. So got that going for yourself. But like I said, when I'm doing it, I like to go towards quality. So I'm going to take this down. 0.5 is the default. I'm going to take this down to 0.25. We'll see what we get. Hit the adaptive button. Got our changes, and we'll take a look at our model. So right now, um, got some a lot of dark orange at the bottom. So we're going from 0.39 into the 0.20, a little band of 0.12. Um, and we're back into one nine, some more 0.12 layer height. And we're working our way up to the 0 0.08. You can see how we have a wider range of smaller layers at the top. So that's a good thing. Um, still not quite what I would like. What I'm gonna do is see what happens if I smooth this out again. I can press the smooth button as many times as I want. I'm gonna press the smooth and we get a change, preview. And you Instantly, I can see that I got rid of that little gray, gray or green band I had going on. Uh, we're making a smoother transition from the 0.39 back to the 0.2. It's not a drastic jump. And I'm getting a little bit more blue at the top for the 0 0.08. So on this one, before I change this. Okay, so our print time is back to 44 minutes, 44 and a half minutes. Not a big change there. Um, I'm going to change my adaptive layers, 0.15 on this. I'm going to, the larger the radius on the smooth, by the way, um, it, what this does is it, it'll make the radius smoother or more coarse. You can click it multiple times, like I said, get your curved effect. Um, it just allows for a better transition between the layers so you don't have a real bad jump from say 0.39 to 0.2 that's going to cause a heck of a step so i'm going to go ahead and i have this smooth again let's take a look at the preview let's see what we got going on yeah i'm getting closer to what i started with here uh there's a lot more yellow going on some green but the top is where all my layers are uh, getting pretty nasty to begin with. I got more blue. I think I'm going to go ahead and stick with what I got there. This is what I'm going to print. But let's before I do it, let's go back and look at the last setting. The keep minimum. So if you want to use that, it's like, well, what that does, it keeps your minimum height. When I'm over here in preview, according to my chart, uh, showing 0 0.08, 0 0.04, 0, 0, 0. My shade is most matching up to 0 0.08. That's how I feel about it. So keep my minimum layer height. All right, well, when I look at my processes, process settings over here on the right, I only got two settings, layer height and first layer height, and they're both set to 0.2. So what is minimum layer height and where will I find it? What you want to do for that is go to your printer settings 
into your extruder and you'll see your layer height limits. My minimum is 0 0.08 and my maximum is 0.36. So in my model right now, I'm not printing anything lower than 0 0.08. So when I'm seeing that blue at the top, I'm hitting 0 0.08. If I come in and I want to change that to 0 0.04, 0 0.02, I can go ahead and do that. Just do it for fun. Let's uh, hit the preview and see what if it changes anything. A little bit. A little bit. Um, I'm still at 44 minutes, 37 seconds. My print time, I think I said I started at 42 minutes. Something like that. So not a big change there. Um, I'm going to go ahead and print this and we'll see how it compares with our what our original model was. Now, like before, I printed one in white, but another one in pink with the same settings in hopes that we can see the results a little bit better. And that looks a lot better with adaptive layers enabled. You can clearly see the difference. It's so much smoother. The layers gradually blend into each other with no visible stepping. And it's just more visually appealing. If you're looking to sell your prints, you want them to look good. Now, I'm pretty pleased with the results based on where we started. Let me know what you think in the comments. Now, to me, the benefits of using adaptive layers are clear. They've got improved detail where it matters, reduced print time by using thicker layers where detail isn't as critical, and you optimize material usage by only using more filament where necessary. So there you have it. The adaptive layer feature in Creality Print 5.1 is a game changer for anyone looking to improve their 3D printing quality and efficiency. Give it a try on your next print. I hope you found the information in this video useful. If you did, hit that like button and let me know in the comments. Smash that bell so you'll be alerted to new content in the future. Live your life one layer at a time. And if you haven't done it yet, please consider subscribing.